Okay. All right, we'll call to order the Tra Green Bay Traffic Commission meeting for Monday, January 11, 2016. We'll on to item number one on their general business, approval of the agenda. Um, Mr. Okay. Chairman, uh, would you want to bring number four up first? Is that the final? Yep, we can do that. Uh, I move approval of the agenda with bringing number four up first. Motion been made, a second? Second. Motion been made and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. To approval the minutes from December 7, 2015 Traffic Commission meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion been made and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We go to number four then, under initial request. Request by Alden Stoyer on behalf of Representative Gendrich for staff to develop a plan to purchase and install two permanent radar speed signs on Monroe, on Monroe Avenue in the Aldo Leopold School Zone. Dave? Yes. Oh, Dan, good. Looking first? No. no. Okay. Yeah. This uh, request is uh, linked and uh, related to um, some ongoing discussions that <coughs> have been uh, occurring over the last couple of months uh, in the area of South Monroe Avenue uh, near the Aldo Leopold School. And uh, there was a neighborhood meeting there in, uh, was it November 23rd, November 23rd uh, which was hosted by Representative Genrich, who's in the gallery today. And um, <coughs> the residents, uh, staff, uh, DOT, city, a uh, number of people participated in that meeting um, uh, regarding speeds along uh, South Manoa Avenue and looking at the, uh, any pedestrian safety concerns. Um, as a follow-up to that meeting, uh, the DOT recently conducted a speed study in the area on South Monroe, just south of the city limits, which is where their jurisdiction starts. Um, that, I mean, that's the point where it becomes a city, where it becomes a county highway. That's where the city has jurisdiction north of that point. South is DOT. So, uh, as a result of that meeting, there was a request to conduct that speed study. Uh, they had concluded uh, that they were going to keep the existing speed limit at 35. Uh, but they did do some speed samples in the city of Green Bay and noted that the, um, the 85th percentile speeds are higher than the posted speed. Um, then uh, subsequent to that uh, result, um, we had received through Alderman Stoyer a uh, request from Eric Genrich, Representative Eric Genrich, uh, regarding the request to install permanent radar speed signs on the mill uh, near the school uh, on Friday. We had a meeting between the, the representative, uh, Director Grenier, and myself uh, regarding this, and um, uh, we talked about many different things, but I, I guess as a conclusion to this, um, we are, as staff, coming to the Traffic Commission with the um, recommendation to refer this to staff for further study. Very basically do, in essence, kind of what the DOT did, look at the speeds, look at um, uh, what is posted, what our engineering uh, review, uh, also determines is, is an appropriate speed, look at crash history, safety, uh, pedestrian crossings, um, items like that. Uh, so with that, that is a staff recommendation we need to refer to staff for study. Uh, I do know that we have some uh, people in the gallery that I'm presuming would like to speak on the item. So with that, I would recommend to the council or the uh, commission to suspend the rules. Okay, do you have a motion to suspend the rules? Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Okay, anybody who would like to speak to the <coughs> item here, if you want to just come up to the podium and speak in the microphone, Great. microphone, give us your name and address, please. Yeah, my name is Eric Genrick, state representative for the 90th Assembly District, and I live at 1089 Division Street, uh, 54303. Um, don't need to encapsulate a lot of, or uh, regurgitate, you know, exactly what uh, Dave Hansen has said. He did a good job of encapsulating <coughs> where this came from. Um, but as he said, we had a community discussion over at Aldo Leopold School. A lot of concerns about speed on Monroe and, and the safety of uh, neighborhood residents and, and school kids who are attending Aldo Leopold School. Um, my biggest concern is, is representing those constituents and bringing those concerns um, to you as, as commissioners on the Traffic Commission. Um, really sort of agnostic about what the solution might be. Uh, I certainly would de defer to uh, Dave Hansen and, and DPW Director Steve Grenier uh, for their expertise. Um, but this is one of the sort of proven uh, mechanisms that can be implemented to reduce speeds. Um, you know, it's, it's been proven to reduce speeds by you know, anywhere from sort of six to eight miles per hour depending upon 
the study that's been done. Um, but again, you know, sort of uh, open to any solution that might be put forward by city staff. Um, the most important thing is to increase safety in that corridor um, to sort of calm the traffic that is going through that that area of Monroe. Um, understanding that it is, you know, it is a, a state trunk highway and, you know, there's a, a fair amount of traffic in there that needs to be moved efficiently. Um, but the, the primary concern, I think, for, for myself and for neighborhood residents is just to make sure that that, that corridor is as safe as possible um, for those students and those residents. Um, so certainly open to any, any questions uh, from the commission. Sure. Go ahead. Thanks for coming in, Eric. Um, yeah. I think one of the things that you were talking about at that meeting and and just with other conversations I've had with you is on Riverside Drive, you know, the fact that in the village of Alloway that it is faster, and it's uh, 35, is it 35, I believe, yep. in that area? So to go from 35 to 25, and I know for a fact that when you come up that road and you come around, people may slow down, but generally they may maintain that speed. And I know you sounded disappointed that, you know, you've, you've tried to look at ways that you could bring that speed a little, uh, bring it down a little bit in Alloway so that when it came into Green Bay, it wouldn't be going 15 to 10 over right. down. And I don't know if there's anything you could give us with that. You know, we, we deal from the city limits north, and you know, we're concerned with safety as well. But right. I think that that was one thing that, if there was a way that we can work with that, that would be really a good point. So yeah, well like Dave Hansen said, there, there was a speed study conducted as a result of our request to DOT. Um, they conducted the study and their finding was that, um, you know, setting it at 25 miles per hour would be too far below uh, that, that 85th percentile of what people, the speed that people are actually traveling at. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why they, they recommended against changing it. And I don't necessarily agree with the conclusion. Um, the way that these speed studies are conducted, it's it's a pretty um, you know long section of the road that they study, and the, my suggestion was to reduce that speed limit where the residential area really starts, um, right near Kalb uh, Street, I believe. So as you're coming up that hill, and it, it you know there are houses there, um, you know again you're you're climbing up a hill, so that I think the natural inclination might be to to slow down. But uh, at any um, you know, it, there just was no inclination to, to reduce the speed there on the part of DOT. So that doesn't seem to be a viable <coughs> option at this point. Like I said, because it is a state trunk road, the fact is, you know, you could approach the village of Alloway and I suppose they wouldn't have any jurisdiction that way. Right. They, they've actually, you know, entertained the idea of, of de decreasing the speed at other parts on Riverside. Um, I think City of De Pere was interested. <laughs> And reducing the speed on the southern portion of that road, um, and they've run into similar roadblocks with, with DOT. At the same time, they are in the process of studying a reconstruction of Riverside. Um, if they were interested in narrowing that road um, and creating uh, what they call a twiddle, which is like a three-lane <coughs> road, which is one of the initial recommendations on the part of their engineering staff, <coughs> I think that would do a lot. To, to slow down that traffic as it enters the city of Green Bay. Um, but it doesn't seem as though that's going to be the option that, that the village is going to arrive on. That's all we have for now. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Representative. Yeah, thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else in the gallery you'd like to speak to this item? Okay. Just come up with your name and address then, please. Uh, Ron Sitnikow, <coughs> 922 South Jackson in Green Bay. Um, I was at that meeting, the neighborhood meeting, and uh, one thing that was um, very clear was that there were a lot of parents, there were a lot of community um, people that were very concerned. This is something that's not really debatable as in regards to if there are issues because there are issues there and I think that um, was obvious with the amount of people that attended the meeting. Um, I'm grateful for Representative um, Gander who, to actually bring this forward to the point where we actually have to try to do something about this because I think that <coughs> to have people who are um, I guess somewhat a little bit um, ir irrational at this point. They want to throw speed bumps out in this um, stretch of highway and we know that's not reasonable. Um, but what that says is there's definitely a need for change and we're looking for something to be done even just to start, <coughs> start us out in a direction that says that this, the city cares about the, 
the walkability and the you know the pedestrian safety in the city versus we we can't do anything about this. Um, it's not you know in our in our best interest according to the study. Um, what we want to see is something done um, sooner than later. I'm, I am a parent. I take this walk daily, and I see you know I know there's a study, but um, there's always conversation happening on the <coughs> playground. There's conversation happening at the crosswalks. Um, we had a dog that was killed because of this um, stretch of road. And at the very least, we'd like to see the, uh, the crosswalk panels um, put in on that, on that crosswalk. Um, we would love the city to pay for that. Um, we don't really want the family who lost their dog to have to rally their friends to make this happen. So um, I think it's something <coughs> that is worth looking at. Um, you know, there is a problem in this area, um, whether, whether or not it, you know, reaches the, the requirements that a study tells you it needs to, but just <coughs> in order for something to be done so that we don't have people, th again, throwing speed bumps out in the middle of a stretch of highway to hopefully make a change. Um, I think there's definitely a lot of parents and um, residents in that neighborhood that would appreciate something um, than nothing. I think they actually see other communities um, close to us who have crosswalk panels, um, whether or not they're helpful, I've heard um, they are. Um, so I, I'm hoping that the commission takes the recommendation seriously and, and wants to resolve the problem and not just keep volleying it back and forth. So, questions? Go ahead, Alma. Rhonda, thanks for coming down. Sure. I was at that meeting as well. Yeah. And of course, you know, um, when you get a, a large crew, crew of people at a meeting, there's always some emotion involved as well, along with, you know, what's right, what's wrong, et cetera. But um, are, you, are you somewhat satisfied that um, the city, I think the city is taking this seriously? Are you, you feel that, um, do you feel comfortable with, with uh, city traffic engineer and such moving forward to study this? Is there like a timeline on something like this? What's what's your feeling? Well, as far I think what I what I think is that I think the people that were at that meeting would like to see something done yesterday, and I don't think that it's a matter of a timeline. I think it's a matter of are you really going to find a solution <coughs> to start with versus are we just going to talk about it? And I think that I mean I I'm walking my district right now and I'm finding a lot of conversation that has to do with public safety and you know pedestrian friendly crosswalks in the city in general and especially in that area. Um, I think in order to to keep the integrity of the traffic commission and the city staff um, traffic department, I think it would be something that needs some sort of resolution. You know, can we widen the road? Can we change the speed limit? Um, the law enforcement was there. You know, for all intents and purposes, they didn't really offer up a solution. M maybe their hands are tied. We don't know. But at this point, we don't really care. We just want something done. I think one of the issues, like <coughs> was mentioned, was that you know it's a state trunk highway. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes there are certain things that our hands are tied with as well. And we have some representation on our commission with that could talk about that. Um, <coughs> you know, I I brought this forward. Uh, you know, because you know. Representative Genrick asked me to do that, and I, I feel that that's an important issue. Um, I think a lot of times when we when you try to come up with solutions, you know, I think you know you say you want to you want a solution yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think that's always, uh, as you know, though things do take a little bit of time, and I I mean I would I want to see something come forward eventually as well, but I you yeah. know I think knee-jerk reactions aren't always the best. I mean no, and I think what I, would t what I would say to that is I would look <coughs> at, um, you know, I drive periodically into De Pere, and I'm assuming that's a similar, you know, I mean, they do actually, you get to slow down in their residential area, um, which is really nice, um, but obviously that's not a possibility here. But I think that w what would be great would be that you actually can look to a community that's you know very close to us. They have those in those are in the crosswalks now. It's actually happening. It's not something that anyone's dreamed up. It's actually literally happening right there. And so it would be <coughs> great to actually have 
to look at that and maybe go to them and ask them, you know, for some feedback about that. If it works or not for them, what are the pros or the cons? I think we would be satisfied with the crosswalk panel. I mean, all we really want to do is cross the street, really. That's all we want to do without having to worry about, um, you know, issues. I think it's very important to note that Aldo Leopold School does not have busing. And that's a huge component of this because there are a lot more kids walking, there are a lot more kids uh, being driven, there are a lot more kids basically on their own coming to school because we do not have busing. And that sets us apart as well. Yeah. And so I think from what I've been hearing, it would be great to have, you know, the study and, and I'm, I'm, you know, I definitely support studies obviously for all kinds of reasons, but the crosswalk panels, do they need a study? You know, that's something that I think could be done sooner than later while we wait for the study to do something bigger. All right. Okay, that's all I have for yeah. now. Yeah. I just want to ask a clarifying yeah. question just so I don't misinterpret what you're saying. The yeah. crosswalk panel, you're talking a I'm little probably not calling green it the right name. traffic sign that's on a rubber base. What's the name of it? Pedestrian crosswalking sign. I'm sorry, was it? Pedestrian crosswalking sign? The thing median. The, the, the one that's in the roadway yeah. that's on a black rubber base that sticks up? Right. The in street yeah. pet sign. Okay. R1-6. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a fancy name. I don't know what that the is. The sign and not sure. the, the panel that gets painted on the pavement. That's what no, I'm trying to make sure I'm not confusing when it's you're saying right. crosswalk um, panel. You, I, I would imagine you have to slow down, otherwise you're going to hit it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's possibly how those work. I do know they have them in Depeer. Um, they must be doing something. They're in the here in the summertime, but not the winter time, because they're all pulled up in the winter time because of snow plowing. So do you know what they yeah. do instead? There's nothing out there in the winter There's time. There's nothing. Except a permanent sign on the side that would be normal. Okay, and see that's yeah, a problem so. because we have school in session, obviously not in yeah. the summertime. So. Yeah, Ashwabanon uses them over on Carroll Lane and Hanson. Do they use them as well in the winter? No. They're no pulled one up does. In the winter time because they're in the way for a snow Well, then process. I would ask for, um, if you could possibly look into other communities in the winter, you know, is there anything else that anyone is doing in a crosswalk situation? I know they have um, crosswalks that are painted vibrant, more vibrantly. There's, you know, mm -hmm. there was already signage there. No one cares because they're going so fast. They don't have time to look at it. But I just feel like there has to be something we could do while waiting for the study. I think the biggest thing is we always say about the three E's, education, mm -hmm. engineering, and enforcement. Right now in the winter time, if, um, I don't know if Carl can speak to it or not, is that lot, um, traffic enforcement unit up and running that was approved or whatever? It's supposed to be coming up next month. And that, that's dedicated <coughs> to enforcing the traffic laws instead of going off. No, and I think there. that was mentioned at that meeting as well, is that we actually have, they're increasing um, the, the staff for the traffic. Mm -hmm units um two i believe is what it was to the officers and it would I yeah that's what we were told um and that's a nice start but it would be great to i mean because i don't think this is an isolated incident this is citywide so it'd be nice to have it would be nice i think it would i mean i'm and I'm, of course this is an opinion but it would be nice for it to have more attention mm -hmm. and to be a priority and yeah, it's like in De Pere too, you know, you don't want to really speed through De Pere because you know they're out enforcing that. So that 85th, you don't have it up there anymore, but that 85th percentile speed is probably a lot lower where there's consistent enforcement because people right. don't know when the officers will be out there with the radar to catch yeah. them. So they um, that'll, that'd be great around. too. Whatever we can take that says that it, we're being taken seriously, I think, is what we need to hear. Yeah. I don't think there's any question the matter of seriously. It's just a matter of resources and time to do it. I mean, I no, there's actually been some um, conversation um, about that. I think that's, I mean, that's probably true, but that's not what the community is feeling. So I think it'd be nice to see something done so that it actually looks like a, a little bit different to them. Okay, well, I don't disagree that it needs some attention. There's no yeah. doubt about it. That, uh, that I'm sure with the staff will take a whole heart and look at it and give you something now. I don't know, it's going to be yesterday like you want, but... Uh, and we'll get attention, I'm sure. And you know, with the speed enforcement, hopefully, along with that, with the trees, that we can make it safe out there. Because nobody likes to live in a neighborhood where you don't feel safe right. crossing the street. Well, especially because you have the trail right I mean, there. I mean, 
a lot of people don't even want to try to even get down there because they, they don't even want to bother crossing yeah. Monroe. So. so you need to realize with enforcement, the city of Green Bay, I mean, you <coughs> came to our meeting on a regular basis every month. Kind of, and not that your story is different in some way, but it's kind of a recurring theme. I mean, you go out through, through the city of Green Bay, there's too much speed here, there's too much air or whatever, and, you know. There's only so many resources and, you know. Yeah, we could book in this with Webster, because that's also in my district, I'm hearing the same conversations about Webster Avenue crosswalks as well. Yeah, no, it's, right. a, it's a dangerous area. Well, we and when, you're, when your vision of your city is to increase the health and wellness, we need to make it more walkable and more pedestrian yeah. friendly and more bikeable. Can't have it both ways. So. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Got some Thanks, good, good points. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else who would like to speak? Just clarify. Uh, time real quick. Paul. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. In our conversation on Friday, um, Dave Hansen had mentioned that a month is probably reasonable to be able to come back to commission with a recommendation <coughs> after your right, analysis. Right. Is that? It's, it's part of our discussions on Friday. We had talked about the timeline. I, yeah, I failed to mention that earlier. But yeah, we were looking at, I mean, there should, really shouldn't be a problem bringing it back to the February meeting. Right. So the next meeting. Great, thank you. Okay. And we meet once a month, so let's. <coughs> All, uh, I'm um, sorry, I think I saw two people. I, I'd just like to address uh, Rhonda's uh, questions regarding the pedestrian crosswalking signs that we discussed at our uh, last commission meeting. Um, they were approved. They're very close to being purchased. Just waiting on another association to offer their uh, involvement in the purchases. And that's, that's Astor Park. Who's paying for it? Oh, well, it would be Astor Park. So it's not the city, it's, it's a neighbor association. It is not the city. Okay. Yeah, it's the neighborhood association. What, what does it yeah. cost for that? $400. So. For total? Yeah. Approximately $380 something. It's around $400. Right, yeah. And I, I had summarized um, some of the acceptable devices. That, uh, are, that meet the crashworthy standards of FHWA. Um, that's the critical part of, of these signs and obviously the retroreflectivity as well um, and the construction of them. So um, I did supply a list of those to the elder um, and also to the school district who we've already had discussions. As a matter of fact, right, probably a half an hour ago, right before I stepped down into this uh, room here, I had a phone call from uh, Joshua from the school district who had said they had already ordered the sign, but apparently they got the wrong base or something <coughs> like that, so that they're in the process of getting that switched out. Um, and when they get that, then one, one of the signs is already uh, going to be made available. Okay. And I don't think there's any doubt that we need to continue to take these steps to resolve the ongoing speeding on the road street that's just plaguing the area. Um, but to answer your question, Mark, there is no shelf life on, on the immediate peak for this. Uh, for a safe road to school. Um, kids are dying all over the United States. What it's going to take here is something to happen on the Wall Street and then something will happen if, 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 as it did with the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what got that roof over at Alvin Vehicle. So um, I would approve this. Um, if, and if you do want to do a study, I think, I, I think the whole city council would approve this type of device being set up. But I just don't want to see any harm to these kids in the near future. As I say, there's no shelf life on a proceeds of the school. So go ahead. Okay. I, thank you, Tom. I, the question I had for Dave was, with these uh, these items, these material, uh, this uh, the science, are they, the, it sounds like the uh, Neighborhood Association is purchasing those, have in the past, throughout the city of Green Bay, when these have been installed somewhere, the costs, were, who do they normally fall to or who should they fall to? It depends on who we're working with. Right. Um, yeah, we had talked about that a couple of meetings ago about what our policy is at Public Works on these signs, and it's always been at the, at the requester's cost. We will, we will approve them based off of each individual location but there are also terms to that as well, as in that sign goes in and out, it's, it's uh, maintained and installed by the other party and purchased by them, and in the winter time they are not to be installed due to um, damage from plows and, and snow removal operations. Just to uh, clarify, that's the crosswalk signage, not the radar signs, that's the agenda item. 
right? Correct. Just yes. we are yeah. we are talking about the in street sign okay. currently. Yes. Oh, I, I guess By the way, I just wanted to clarify just so everyone is on the same page. I just did a little quick search. Is this what you're referring to, right? Yeah. Tim, right? Yes. Okay. So. Well, I, anyway, <laughs> that I mean. <laughs> I mean, we see all sorts of signs throughout the city, and some are put up by the city, and others are not. So I, I guess I would right. would I'd like some clarification on that for future reference, so yep. that. And it is every one of the locations that are in conditionally right now are at schools. Um, Franklin Middle has one at uh, the mid block crossing at Lower Lane, or Lori Lane, and then the other one is uh, for Preble High School at uh, Decker Dams. As purchased by the school district. Correct. Okay, so in this case, it seems like that if they want these signs up, that it would be through the neighborhood association. Is that what is that what I'm? That hearing? could be one of the first. Yeah, we we don't necessarily. Um, it's not up to us it's about who purchases it. Or that can be uh, any group, uh, but it has to be an approved location. Okay, but that's, that's an key. effort I took. That avenue I took because um, I did speak with the principal at Aldo Leopold. And I wanted her to contact Celestine Jeffries because she's the district school board member. Um, I'm still waiting for a reply, and I, I'll probably hear uh, about one from you soon. But I'm saying if that's the case, then you know if that could be with the school district, you know, I mean, rather than falling on the, you know, the neighborhood association. Well, that's that's what neighborhoods do. They well, help each other out. No, I understand. And they're willing to put forward their effort and. Uh, I don't take advantage. It's not advantage of they have the monies. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm looking it's at cost here. Similar to a grant, we do give the association. Yeah. Dan, you could probably answer. Yeah, that. there's <coughs> excuse me. There's many grants available through the right. Green Bay Neighborhood Leadership Council for this type of thing. Right. Okay. okay. All right. That's all I have. One other person. Yeah. Did you care to speak, sir? Yes, please. Your name and address, please. Joshua Schwalbe, it's at 1216 Cherry Street. Um, I want to thank you for giving some attention to an area that some people have some concerns about. I know it's, it's very hard to come to the right conclusion. There's no magical answer to make everybody happy. But there is a kind of a priority list on parts of the, the city that are designated for one form of transportation over another. And I think what you're hearing um, is that this area, um, one of the forms of transportation sees a little discrepancy. You know, they, they say that there needs to be a little bit of improvement. Um, I'm completely for a traffic study because uh, you need to know what's going on in an area before you can try to, to plan uh, for the different various forms of transportation. Um, that's a very uh, quantitative approach to what's going on on any particular part of the city. But uh, what I would ask is that we take a little bit more of a qualitative approach and see uh, what, the, what the qualities of walking around the neighborhood are. And I think that's where most of the uh, conversations, most of the complaints, like at the Elder Leopold meeting, I was at that meeting, and there were a lot of really good ideas. You kind of had to dig around for them, but uh, they were just saying, we, we see some room for improvement. So I, I, I uh, would support the little speed uh, flashy signs when you go over the speed limit, just because it makes it more uncomfortable. The quality of driving would go down just a little bit to be reminded of how fast you're going through a neighborhood. And I think that would that would, you know, lower the speed of certain percentage points. I don't know specific that's what the traffic studies are for. But again, if we can take a little more of a qualitative approach um, to the, to different areas where these, these things are brought up, uh, I think we can come to a much better uh, conclusion. It makes most everybody happy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Joshua, for coming in. Thank you. Um, and Rhonda brought it up too. I think one of the concerns is that you know school is open, you know, nine months out of the year, and winter is one of the times it's open. So to take the science down, I understand the, the dynamic with that that you have to take the science down because of snow plowing. We've had one major storm this year. We've had one minor, very minor snowfall. Um, I guess my concern is like how, you know. I think winter time is probably one of the times that you really need some safety issues or, or implementation and put forward. And I'm just saying, if they're not there, I mean, what's your what's your take on that? Well, um, winter is a, a, something we have to deal with, especially with traffic. I will have to say, there's the addition of snow banks, and snow banks are a barrier. They make it 
less comfortable for people to drive faster because they don't know what's going to jump out in front of them. I mean, when you drive a car, your main task is not to hit anything and get from point A to point B in that order. So uh, when you have snow banks, I mean, obviously a snow plow needs to have access, but I don't see that as being a concern with a removable, I mean, these are, th you can move these around, right? There's a rubber base. So I don't, I don't see the concern if one person has to be designated from the school to remove the signs when it might snow and put them back after the, the snow's been removed. I, I don't see that as a problem. Okay. Personally. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Anybody else? Just yes, going to the, the last statement. Um, the reason that we have that is that it's not always something that we find that's complied with. Okay. As in, you, know, you allow it over time and all of a sudden, you know, you go out there during a snowstorm and I just see this big thing around it and the school's not taking, they're not owning up to the agreement. Okay. I mean, so that could be a condition of We just have to make a policy one way okay. or the other. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead, sir. Roger Rutzloff, 209 West Whitney Street, Green Bay. Um, I both bicycle and drive on uh, Monroe Street through the Astor neighborhood. And um, when I drive, uh, I did start this some years ago, I now force myself to go the speed limit. And I find that, uh, I'm sure you're aware of this, that uh, when I'm in a group of cars that's proceeding, proceeding down the street, I'm going 25 miles an hour, um, I'm passed by every car in that group. And uh, not by a little bit of speed, but quite a lot of speed. Um, I've driven on Monroe and I've ridden my bicycle on Monroe during the school hour, uh, release hours. And I find that there is virtually no uh, decrease in speed on the part of drivers as they proceed through that area. Um, I spent a number of years in Chicago and still keep in touch with uh, uh, the community in various ways with both friends, but I also subscribe to a uh, transportation news stream that talks about uh, transportation issues in the Chicago, the Chicago area. And I've done that because I bicycle so much, both for commuting, transportation, and recreation, that I like to be aware of what I'm up against, generally. Um, Chicago has found that the only thing that controls speed is to install speed tables on primary roads. Uh, speed tables are not speed humps, but they do cause, it is a change in the elevation of the roadway that causes cars, uh, persons in cars to experience kind of a quick rise and a quick descent if they're going over a certain speed. Uh, it's been a, the only truly effective thing other than um, red light cameras or speed cameras that are permitted in Illinois but not permitted in Wisconsin um, to uh, control driver speed, which is worse in Chicago than it is here, really. Um, the uh, <coughs> radar speed detectors that they just installed in Alloway do absolutely nothing to change the speed of people on uh, driving. I, again, I travel very often to get to 172, and again, I'm going 30 miles an hour there. I watch people pass me, and as soon as that speed detector shows 35, 37, 40 miles an hour, they don't slow down. They see it, they don't slow down. So, and once they're up there long enough, the driver will generally ignore the sign. It's just another feature of the roadway that they, they drive past. So um, the short-term solution to speeding, the only thing you can do is provide uh, some kind of enforcement mechanism um, from the police. Uh, the State Department of Transportation and uh, the Bicycle Federation of Wisconsin have this uh, share and bury wire program. Um, that's more of a, it's a more of a passive way of developing little programs that you can employ in neighborhoods, especially where you have speeding problems or failure to yield to pedestrians. Um, you can invite them in to develop a program to help people get across the roads and suggest other mechanisms that might help uh, alleviate the problem. I would certainly advise uh, you know, approaching that program for this stretch of road <coughs> faster. 
but uh, unless you're going to, the only quick way to start controlling speeds is to have police at critical times driving down the roadway, turning around, going the other way, and as they're passed by someone exceeding the speed, they turn on their lights and their sirens. If you don't do that, you're not going to get people to recognize that they're breaking the law and causing a problem. They don't have to be stopped. They don't have to be ticketed. The idea is to get people to realize that they're breaking the law, they're causing a hazard by doing so, and they need to stop. So, um, but the physical element is really the long-term solution. I strongly recommend speed tables or some other physical means of uh, getting drivers to slow down on that road. Thank you, Thank sir. You. I'll do. Real quick, just add to what he was saying. Uh, when I first got my license when I was 16, I, I uh, had this mold on and I was traveling and I was off the college and the first speeding ticket. And it was my last. <laughs> so, you know, enforcement is a, a number one reason why we, we, uh, we don't speed. But another issue that uh, concerns me is when I was at El Leopold uh, watching the traffic, uh, and I was running a radar gun at the time, and more than 50% of the people were on their, either on their cell phone or they were texting and not paying attention to the speed limit. They didn't even see it. They just tra are traveling at high speed right through the area. And, and that's a major part of the problem. That's another issue we're going to have to look into in the future. That's it. Okay. Uh, does anybody else care <coughs> to speak this issue? We'll give one more go around and we're going back to normal business. It'll be the last call for anybody who wants to. Can I just get clarification on the sure. winter? What is winter? Can you say winter? I'll define that presence of snow. Okay. So there's not. Not winter. necessarily temperature, but okay. let's just say, like, what was it, right before, uh, right around Christmas time? We didn't have any snow on the ground. So I would, in essence, allow the signs up to that point and then, you know, we watch the forecast. And of their operations division to find out, you know, what's the plan and operation plan and all of that, based off of the forecast that we get. But once we hit that first snowfall, then it's December. It's like we're going to be staying for a while, and that's that's what we would consider the winter. And it's not just the plowing of, of, of that snow, because as you had mentioned, it's like, well, you know, there's snow banks and it might be clear for a while, but there's also slippery conditions coming off the of side streets, which may not be as plowed as well, and there's other reasons why the snow conditions or the snow event uh, creates a hazard of having that sign there and its propensity of getting hit. It's, it's chances are significantly increased under, under winter road conditions. So it's not just a, a snow event itself. It's the actual presence of snow, ice, sweet, slippery conditions in general. One more. Sure. Sure. Um, so let's say we don't actually have a crosswalk sign. We have a crossing guard to supplement that. Where would we go to, to talk about that? So that? We don't have a crossing guard there. Cross, the crossing guard program is administered by the Green Bay Police Department. Right. The locations of those are actually approved by Traffic Commission and ultimately okay. Council. So yes, okay. the, a study would be conducted to evaluate the location. Um, for feasibility, and then that result is brought back to the traffic commission. There's a coordinator, correct? The right. Can program. still have that yep. program? Yet? There's a coordinator that you can contact. Yeah, because okay. that would be our through the police department. Well, other than the school school is, is you can just make some sort of study to your mutual department to study. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it as well. Good. Yeah. Good. Right. I was going to ask if that could be part of the study. Yeah. Well, that's crossing guard. I'd it, like to see that, that is that conversation is ongoing right now between the school district and the police department to determine. Okay. But I, I think I think Mark makes this a good is point that it's, it's going to eventually come here anyways. So right, if you're right. going to study, it, you might as well study it now. So. No. Well, I realize that's not this agenda item, but I, you know, if that's under new business or what it, what have you, I'd like to. Oh, you can put that. In, uh, I'll put that. When in we refer to staff. You can put that in there. Okay. And right. Celestine Jeffries is the individual at the school board that's been spearheading this particular effort. Okay. Right. Right. Well, especially okay. if those signs are right.